minister of propaganda in Nazi Germany, famously said in many different ways that propaganda needs to be simple and mindless and only allow people to be lazy and to buy into it. It needs to be simple and easy, not complex. And I saw a quote by Eric Hoffer that basically says the same thing. It's in a graphic on the front page of Infowars.com, today's main image. Propaganda does not deceive people. It merely helps them to deceive themselves. And that is exactly what we face. Dumbed down, simplistic, mindless fraud. It's up to us to discover the reality of what's being done to us. Not to look at who's wearing the nicest jacket or has the best hair or who has the nicest tie or who has the best speechwriters, but who is real and who is promoting common sense ideas that have been successful and created amazing stability and prosperity for time in memorial. We are teleprompter free radio, teleprompter free television, simulcasting the syndicated radio broadcast across the United States. Infowars.com forward slash show to find the free video feeds because you will often hear me mentioning uh, video or articles or legislation or documents that we have on screen. So I call this radio transmission Radio Squared or Radio to the Next Power. We, of course, pioneered not just having a webcam. I had a webcam off and on 14 years ago. But we've pioneered the last decade plus simulcasting the radio with a full live news TV transmission. Adding a whole layer of reality. <clears throat> and the reason I did that, the reason I do that, is the same reason that I made a documentary film, my first film in 1997. America Destroyed by Design, two years after I first got on air 20 years ago. And it's because I had the state documents, the State Department documents, the federal legislation, the UN-UNESCO treaty. I had all of it on our national parks and national heritage sites and huge buffer zones, sometimes hundreds of miles around it being put under United Nations control. And I had congressmen on to talk about it. And I had physicists and scientists and, and environmental scientists on, like Dr. Michael Kaufman, who had the UN maps and had testified to Congress. And people would call in and say, it is insane. The UN is not taking over our national parks. The U.N. is not shutting down silver and gold mines, in a case in Colorado, 30 miles away from the park, saying it's under a U.N. buffer zone. But they did. It was even in the Denver Post. But I couldn't show people on radio what I was saying. So I started Infowars.com in 96 as an attempt to link to the articles, but back then most newspapers didn't even have their news online. They would just have a, the headline and then a link to a subscription area. So I would do things like clip out the newspapers. And I had listeners all over the country who would mail me the newspapers, usually a, you know, a week old, and then I would clip them out. And I would take photos of them and put them on Infowars.com but then the problem was I couldn't afford the bandwidth bills of the thousands, tens of thousands of people a day then, now it's millions, that visited Infowars.com. And so I said, I've got to make money so I can pay this bandwidth. And so I began to make films and sell films and tell people to make copies of them. And I'm not going off a rabbit trail here. I'm trying to get people to think about how
how 20 years ago, almost no one knew the Federal Reserve was private. And if you confronted someone with its charter, they would laugh at you and say, shut up, kook. Because they didn't want to be involved. They just needed some propaganda of the word conspiracy theorist that's simple, that's mindless, that's dumbed down, that's an excuse for them to ignore what you're saying and move on. Now, fast forward from 1995 to what's about to be 2015 in just a few weeks. People now know the Federal Reserve's private and national polls over 90%. People want it over 90% in Gallup polls, audited or shut down. The worm completely turned. And the worm's turning on abortion. And the worm's turning on gun control, victim disarmament. And the worm is turning on energy. The worm is turning on everything. We are on the verge of a complete political awakening and realignment of the magnitude that this world has never seen, not just here in the United States, but all over the globe. So what are the technocrats going to do? They're going to use their control of social networks to gatekeep what they allow to catch fire. And they're only going to try to have violent socialist, Fabian socialist and communist movements financed by Wall Street and other financial interests to be ineffectual revolutions that also discredit revolution. Now, I'm not in the classical sense a revolutionary. I am a restorationist. I want my legitimate republic back because it's the best idea in history. It works really well when implemented. It produces more freedom, more security, more wealth than we can even handle. And thus the byproduct, the side effect of us being decadent, usurped slobs on average at this point. But the worm's turning as we go out of prosperity, into decadence, into slouching, into tyranny, and then the renaissance begins again. <sighs> And that's the type of revolution I want. That's why I restate that routinely. It is a peaceful one of ideas. You always hear, oh, let's have a shooting war. Oh, let's you know, have a march and, 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 and go after the Capitol. The system wants that because they're losing the long-term societal info war. That's why they're trying to flood the country to turn us into the Tower of Babel where we can't communicate with each other and drive down the wages. That's why they're trying to shut off the power. That's why they're trying to increase the prices. That's why they're desperately trying to stir up race war all over the country. Because they do not have a hope if they don't engage in divide and conquer.